Hey folks, welcome back to the bench. Well, it's been a long time. We haven't done a video in forever. Haven't been doing any RC stuff, so that's why I haven't really posted anything to this channel. I've been doing some other stuff, but it's all unrelated, and I just haven't had time. Life's been busy and whatnot, but uh, it's pretty much the middle of July 2016, and I'm only now finally getting to play with the toys here. Now, uh, I don't know if you've seen this. This is my, I think it's... I don't know if this is Emax branded, but it's like the Nighthawk 250 frame I've had. I don't know if I've actually done a video on it, but it's all set up for uh, FPV. I've got my, uh, where are they? I originally had some of the Quantum goggles, I still have, but my wife upgraded me to some Fat Sharks. These are the, uh, uh, which ones are these? I can't even remember. They're not the bottom of the barrel ones, but they're not the best ones either. They're not the dominators. I think they're the predators, but uh, they work pretty good. And, uh, it's uh, definitely better than the uh, the big old uh, Quantums, which my son's going to use on the other quadcopter, which I'll show you in another video. But uh, today's plan is to get this sucker fixed up before our uh, family reunion so I can take it out and fly. Now, there's a few issues with it at the moment. First, which is always an issue, broken prop. Two broken props, but uh, well, a chipped prop and a broken prop. So I got to deal with that. But the other bigger issue is my antenna. My clover leaf is missing a lobe, and I never noticed that before. I don't know if it looks like it pulled right out of the uh, out of the solder. So I don't have another one like this that has the. Uh, I can't remember if it was RPSMA or SMA. This is the, uh, this is an SMA, and I have a, some RP SMA set, but I don't want to use these because these go on the other quadcopter. So uh, my plan, and also you can see that's rigid because uh, it's been modified. This, oh, there goes my charger. Let me hold on here, shut that up. There we go. So this is a piece of, uh, solid coax if that makes any sense it's uh it's got a solid conductor in the middle and uh, solid outside so it's rigid so it doesn't flop around which maybe that's a bad thing it'd be better if it were to bend around but i'd be worried about it getting into the prop but it must have been the last crash into the trees and it peeled the lobe off so i have this guy here which is different polarization it's only three lobe but i'm hoping Based on looking at it, it's going to be the same uh, setup for the same frequency. The uh, what is it, 5.8? So I'm hoping I can take this off, one of these lobes off of here, and transplant it onto here and recover this antenna. So that's my plan for tonight. So uh, I'll uh, bring you along and we'll see if it works or not. I may just uh, shut up and do like a little fast forward Benny Hill mod style video, but we'll see. Got my old trusty old, well not old, fairly new, Hako Triple Eight D iron. I always recommend buying a good quality iron if you're gonna do any sort of uh, work like this because uh, it makes all the difference. So first things first is I'm gonna see if I can dissect this to recover some of the elements to put on this guy. We'll give her a go and see what happens. Could be a fail, it might work, but uh, regardless, hope you enjoy. Oh, as well, along with a good soldering iron, get good, good solder too. This is an old roll of Kester that I've had kicking around for a long time. It's actually, yeah, 6337, which I think is pretty hard to find nowadays, but uh, it's good stuff anyhow. Voila! Now it did open up a little bit, but uh, 
the way I figure it's uh, going to be better than nothing because I don't have any way of getting a new uh, antenna anytime soon so might be gone in a city where I might be able to pick a set up but uh, I know they're so expensive but might be worthwhile spending the money so there's that now uh, we'll see about yeah, see this is poorly made and the solder just came loose. There's a cold solder joint, I think, is what caused it. So by pulling all the solder out of the top here, getting rid of that lead free. Oh, there's a cat. Lead free crap. I might uh, add some reliability to this. This stuff, uh, don't let anybody ever tell you that you can get away without it. A lot of the, because it uh, makes a big difference. Even though there's flux in the solder, still helps to uh, use a bit extra. It's not like it's, this is the no clean stuff that I've got here. I can't remember who makes it, I've got the bottle somewhere. Guess I could uh, take a look for you. I got it from an electronic store. Uh, an electronic store that is closed now, unfortunately. Uh, MG Chemicals is the brand. That's the stuff. Don't get the cheap Chinese garbage either. You get what you pay for. In this case, I have nothing against Chinese products. They have their place for sure. I mean, a lot of the stuff on these RCs are Chinese origin. And I'm rambling on, but this stuff that I'm using here is called uh, solder wick, and it's used to wick solder away from joints. This stuff right here handy to have too. Let's see if this is going to be a win or a fail. I think this is going to work folks. Say so it won't be perfect, but this was a cheap antenna array anyway. Now this is the biggest small one I've got. That'll work. Now, just hold on a sec here. Had to move the camera so I could get it. This guy, it's called a pin vise. And it'll hold the drill bit, and I can just spin it by hand. Well, it should hold the drill bit if it'll close up small enough. Yep, just like so. Now I can just ream that hole out a bit. Perfect. I'd say, I'd call that a success. This is one of those things where, if you're in this hobby, you can't be afraid, afraid to try this stuff because you know what? What have you got to lose? The thing's already toast. So why not give it a go? Try to fix it yourself. You could, I could have even gone and got and got a chunk of solid wire and bent up a new piece and uh, fixed it that way. But I saved myself some uh, money using what I had. So. I say don't be scared to uh, try this stuff the worst I can do is it won't work and you'll learn a thing or two so I'm gonna get this uh, sorted out throw some props on and then uh, 
work on the other quadcopter. Oh, and I don't know if I gave you a rundown of this quadcopter. I might as well. It's a Nighthawk 250, I think. S. Was he? Uh, I think it was a. Uh, what was it? An Emax branded one, but there's a couple different versions of the same frame. It's a nice solid frame. I've had some good uh, crashes with it. Well, I don't know if you'd call them good crashes. I don't think any crash is a good crash. But uh, it's held up well. I lost it in the trees for quite a while. The only way I found it was because I had the goggles or the camera on and I had my uh, cousin, he was walking back and forth and I finally told him, oh, I see you, so you're close and we finally f found it. But, but yeah, so it's got it's running in these 32. I don't know if you, I guess I could zoom you in a bit, maybe. There, let's see here. Move you over. There you go. So it's got the Naze 32 in there. It's probably a new firmware upgrade for it that I'll, I'll have to put into it. It's got a uh, Fat Shark camera. Sorry, Fat Shark camera. Fat Shark uh, transmitter. Can't remember if that all came as a kit or if I bought it separately. And a Fat Shark power distribution thing, which is really nice. And the way I've got it rigged up, I grab a battery here. Where are they? I don't know where all my batteries are. They're probably still in the toolbox somewhere, but I can show you with a bigger battery here. The nice thing about this uh, power distribution thing is I run the battery plug in for the power of the main system and then the balance lead actually plugs in here and that powers the uh, transmitter and the camera and all that so it works out good it's a little tricky getting your fingers in there but makes for a nice neat setup uh, the batteries I use I gotta find them huh well I don't know where the heck I put them all oh I think they're in a case stashed away I'll have to find them but they're a local hobby store well used to be local to me but great hobbies out of Canada I use their packs and they work pretty good three cell and they're 2100s 2300s 2350 something like that 21 8 or 1800s I can't remember but uh, I use those and uh, I use a uh, orange brand from Hobby King this one is a R615X and it uses PPM so it's only got one connection which cleans up the wiring too and then on top for my uh, video I just strap on one of the uh, cheap uh, keychain cameras and that works all right that's what this little tethers for so if it comes loose it uh, doesn't disappear got the antenna up here on a tie wrap so it stays put and generally it runs uh, runs pretty good so uh, yeah uh, stay tuned maybe I'll get some flying videos from the reunion and uh, I'll also show you the other uh, quadcopter which is a uh, 450 firewheel knockoff that my son will be flying so once I get this one sorted out uh, we'll uh, take a look at that one next so until then take care and talk to you later